There's a wicker in there. There it goes. They taste like a mixture of chicken and pork. You can hunt them in the Chatham Islands, but you can't hunt them here in New Zealand. They're protected here. And they predate on everything smaller than themselves. Rats and mice, birds, ducklings. They're an omnivore. How you going, Ed? That's Poe, my main pig dog behind me. She's very unfit. I'm very unfit after COVID-19. We're all very unfit. It wasn't COVID-19 that made us unfit. It was the lockdown. Not doing fuck all for like six to eight weeks and longer. So right now we're going away for a pig hunt and I wanted to go through this gear beside me here because I'm just about to go. I thought, well, I'll make a quick video and just show you guys what we use, some of the gear. If I can do that without you standing over everything, Poe, that'll be a lot... Uh, easier and much appreciated. Move aside. Right up. We've got uh, putties or gaiters as they're known. So I'm wearing some game gear with some pants. They're soft and if it's country, I don't actually know where I'm going hunting. I mean up with mate Patrick but if it's country that's, that's real thick I'll throw those on. If it's real thick I'll throw on some chaps which are in the truck. A pair of boots. Currently I'm just sporting my gum boots right now. But, uh, a pair of decent boots. A couple of two ways are a must if you're hunting. So yeah can tell your mate where you are when you're stuck down the gully or you're struggling, like I often am. Uh, one of these here, this is the Alpha 100 Garmin, that's to track the dogs, collars all in the bag in the end. Spare pocket knife, a must. This is a skinning knife, but there's nothing wrong with sticking a pig with that. It's a new Victory I've just bought, so it's sharp as, and very handy. Uh, the downside is they can fall out of a sheath when they're like that. I've seen it happen to mates, so it's not 100% secure but it's rough enough. Firearms license just in case we're uh, carrying a... I'm not taking my firearm but my mate is and we might want to share it on the hill. There's my really good stick knife and field dressing knife. It's all rolled into one. Good blade made by Simon Walker. I'm taking two knives because I'm not sure what Patrick's got with him. A collar just with a chain for dogs. Oh, you're not making this easy. Some strings. Always important bit of rope type, your pig. Two of these, not one, two. Always take two torches, so there's a uh, H14, and this is a lead lenser, which is a handy wee torch, actually rechargeable. A couple of gloves in case we get stuck in the rough stuff, you know, blackberry and gorse. Plenty of these for the dogs, rip collars, other game gear rip collars. And I've got a new jacket that's been uh, gifted to me by Hunter's Element, and I'm keen to try this, because it's got a wee thing there for carrying your G GPS unit. Uh, it's got that molly webbing it sticks onto, so I got that in the weekend at the hunting and fishing store in Wellington and they gave me that, I'm going to give it a good go. In the bag here I've got all the tracking gear for the dogs, TT15s, best collars in the world I reckon. Well the old DC30s are pretty good but these are better because you can actually train your dogs in them, they've got a training system on them. And again game gear collars and last of all a bit of water for me and that's all I'll take, I don't take any food when I go hunting, I'll wait till I've done my hunt and I eat at the end of the day. Right, we'll kick it in the guts, pick up the dogs, gonna put all four in the truck. Probably only hunt two at a time because Patrick's taking his dogs as well. And he's taking his rifle now. The thing about taking young guys out, as I've always done, a lot of people say, oh, you're a good bastard, Clay, taking all these young fellas out. But you know what? I'm not a good bastard, I'm just a bastard. And everybody should do that. It's just a normal thing to do is take young guys out, share your fishing with them and your hunting with them, get them started. I don't see it as being good, I just see it being normal is what we should all do and it all goes around and the thing is that by doing it you actually make your own world a brighter world too. So this guy I'm taking out today, well he's taking me out, I'm eating him in Murchison, he's a guy I've been taking out forever, well used to, when he was like 11 I started taking him out, he's now 29 I think and uh, so you know, we'll go on the hill, he's fitter and stronger than me now, he's a young man and I'm an old man so it's bloody good, get up there B. Get him, mate. Get him, Pope. Pope. Hang on, time it is. Stay there, mate. Get the dogs. And we'll throw the two rat bags. Pace is going to ride up the front with me, and I'll put Bigsy in the back with his mum. More with uh, B. He doesn't fight. He's a real mellow dog. Hey, boys, we're going for a hunt. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, by taking young guys out, you end up, um, they end up becoming men in a few years. Just like taking a pup out. It becomes a a running dog. So uh, I don't see that I'm doing anything uh, saintly or bloody 
it's just a normal thing to do. Isn't that what we should all do? Is just look, look after the younger people. So it's the norm. So in effect, it actually makes life better for me because uh, I know you don't want to go in there, mate. Go to it. Good boy. Good to train your dogs to go toilet before you hunt them and also to hydrate them. I teach them to drink. Come. Pace come. The other two dogs have had a drink, but I don't know if these guys have. We'll find out. Pace come. Bixie come. Drink. 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 He isn't not thirsty. Bixie drink. Drink. Well, oh, pee's a good idea. Probably getting... Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We're travelling about an hour and a half. Two hours to merch. They're not thirsty. Oh, there'll be a stream up in the hill anyway. Yeah, hydrating and toileting my dog is something I always do before I hit the road. This is not a long trip from my place to Merch, I don't know, I suppose, an hour and... I don't know. I'll put you up here, Bigsy. Bigsy, come. Bigsy, up. Bigsy, come. Up. Good boy. Get in. Good dog. What a great dog. And Pace, you can ride up shotgun beside me. Because we know what'll happen. We'll start driving and he start making noises and driving us all crazy and eventually... I'll give in because I'm a soft bastard and he'll end up in the front beside me. So we might as well just get it over and done with straight away and stick him beside me now, eh, Pace? Right, going to hoof all that in the truck. Not taking me gun. I do have a 410 and I've also got a Magnum 44 I take with me, but I'm going to leave that behind. Going to smash this in the back of the truck and hit the road. Okay, buddy, you know what time it is, don't you? Yeah, tail's wagging, you know what's going on. Yeah, you can smell everything, eh? You know what time it is. Good boy. Yeah, yeah he's excited, eh? So am I, mate. We're all a bit unfit, but this is one way to sure as hell get fitness just to go hunting. Pace, get up. I didn't really say you can sit in the front seat, mate, but anyway, you're in there now, I suppose. So, uh, I don't actually catch a lot of pigs. I'm not one of those uh, legendary hunters likes of, I don't know, Sneaky, me mate. Every time he goes out, he seems to catch a bloody boar or a sour one. He catches heaps. Well, I've got mates that just, you know, they, they just, uh, all the time, they just, oh, Richard Weir, he's like, Man, he catch more pigs than you can poke a bloody stick at. I go out and sometimes I get lucky and I trip up over a sow and suckers and get all excited because I've got some meat to take home. And that's all it's about is taking a bit of meat home for me. I don't care about catching a stinky old boar anymore. I mean, it gives me a buzz if I've got the young fellas with me and they're getting excited. But to be honest, I've caught enough, enough boars in the past to, you know, satisfy that part of myself. And as you get older, you kind of like... Uh, I don't know, I've softened up a bit, softened up with my dogs, softened up with my children, softened up with everything in life and uh, I guess I'm a lot more tolerant than I used to be and a lot more patient, I haven't always been patient, in fact uh, I think I've been quite impatient in the past but life that does it to you, it throws things at you and you, you learn to calm down and slow down and realise we're only here for a good time, not a long time and you don't sweat the small stuff, you can go in the back mate, go on, get in the back. He thought about it, he thought, oh, I'll try it on him. I'll turn this around a bit. I don't even know if I can actually talk to you while I'm driving. I think it uh, bounces around a bit too much. And I've got this very awesome hat, and if you guys want one, um, let me know. This was made, handmade by Iona. I use it all the time. The winter, I'm going to stick it under the uh, the phone here so it doesn't bounce up and down while I'm talking to you down in the road. To get down the driveway. Yeah, Iona makes those. She hand knits them. They're lovely, awesome uh, handmade hats. She also does socks as well. And... Uh, your mate Scott, that's his lovely, lovely lady. They came to stay with me last year on the houseboat. Bloody good time, actually. Hope they come again. Anyway, uh, today we're heading towards Merch, and that's all I can tell you. I don't know where we're going hunting, but I know my mate Patrick's got a lot of blocks. He's a forestry worker. He's got his own forestry company uh, doing contract work and that. And he's got a couple of dogs. He's got the brother of Pace. He's actually quite a good wee dog. I think his name's Tig or Trig. I don't know, Patrick seems to change it every time, but a really good wee dog that does kind of what I call grid hunting. The dog takes the face of a hill and he basically just goes like this. He goes across, 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 across. And he's a smart dog and he's caught boars by himself. And he's also got the same traits as this guy's. He's a bit of a kamikaze pilot. and probably won't last forever. Ideally, I'd like to move to baiting dogs. For those of you that don't do a lot of hunting overseas and don't know what I'm talking about when I say baiting dogs, in New Zealand we have three types of pig dogs for hunting. We have dogs that are, could be a Vizsla or a Labrador that just goes and points the pig in the bush like a pointed out. It'll actually literally point and the hunter will have that dog out in front of him and he'll sneak in with his 223 or his 308 or whatever it is and he'll shoot the pig. Then we have baiting dogs. Their job is to bail the pig up. 
over in America they call those bay dogs. And they'll basically bark at the dog, please get in the back, get in the back, please get in the back. They'll bail the dog up and again the hunter will sneak in hopefully on the right side of the wind because if the pig smells him or hears him he'll be gone. They stop the pig by nipping it on the nuts or the back end, they might bite on the snout and then they'll back off and they'll bail it hard. That's a bailing dog. And then we have our, our hard holders or our holders over in uh, the States, I think they call them luggers, is that right? Or is that what they call them in Aussie? I'm not sure, let me know, comment below. I guess luggers come from holding on the lug, you know, the air, because that's predominantly where the dog will hold the pig. So there's the three types, we also really, I guess you could add a fourth to that, and we have what we, it's a combination of everything. It's a dog that'll ground scent or air scent, find the pig, and it'll sniff it out, or it will use its sight, predominantly its nose, find it, and it will bail it, stop it and bail it, and then when the hunter gets there, it'll hold it, and that's what Poe does, that she's in the back. I don't very often see her baiting, I know she does bail, because you can hear her baiting for ages, but when she knows I'm getting closer, she does me the, uh, the hard bit, she goes in and holds it for me, so uh, I can go in and stick it. So we use a stick knife, and it can be any sort of knife, reasonably long, and we want to go for the heart shot, we're either going down through the throat, or even faster still, behind the front shoulder, and directly into the heart. And that, that side stick uh, doesn't get used much in New Zealand, but actually it's a better stick in general. The pig suffers less. I mean, it's got a knife going directly to its heart. Often down the throat, people miss it, and you see the pig get back up again and walk around and cough up blood, and that's just absolutely horrible. So I prefer myself a stick to the ribs and the side under there. It's also easier. You don't have to flip the pig. But the old flip, and, you know, flip them and stick them is uh, pretty popular in New Zealand, and uh, I've done plenty of it, but I do prefer the side stick myself. I find it's uh, faster. And Pace, get in the back. You're crying there, and you're already starting to get excited. We've got a long way to go, mate, so calm down. Just calm the farm, yeah? I'm pretty excited about going for a hunt, so see, we haven't been for a while. It's uh, been that crazy sort of thing here in New Zealand where we had, like, uh, level four lockdown. We couldn't go do any hunting. We had to wait till we sort of got right down to, to one to hunt and uh, in the interim we've all got unfit, we've all got uh, a bit sort of out of sync with hunting and we haven't gone into the bush much at all. And those that did either uh, broke the law and gave no fucks about the rest of us and putting themselves in a situation where they were, um, you know, could have, could have come unstuck and the services wanted to go out and, and rescue them or they genuinely had to hunt to survive and I've got a lot of mates like that and I've got no problem with that at all to be honest but yeah what, whatever you did your own business really I didn't hunt I missed out on hunting but now I'm excited about it a lot of people did hunt during lockdown the forestry around here you know I was really excited about getting back into it when it was all over and I got back into it and found the pig numbers weren't really high like I expected they were and then I remembered a lot of young guys had sent me pictures of their pigs and you know on the back of their truck during lockdown, I'd have a question where it was, and I since found out later on that they worked out that most of the authorities were also in lockdown, and they were sneaking away, poaching the hell out of all the forestry blocks around the place, like a young man would do. I mean, I, I don't, uh, I don't blame hunters for getting out during that time. It's, it's a part of who we are, what we are, how we, we've evolved in this country, and it's very difficult. What are you doing, Pace? I'm not condoning it, but I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I do understand it. I can understand guys like, you know, their mental well-being suffering. Um, <laughs> okay, you can calm down. Right, I'll stop yakking because I'm just talking too bloody much. I only just had a coffee, and you can always tell when I've had a coffee, I'm a yakker box. I'm, I'm worse, even when I've had a coffee, I'm as bad as it goes just in general, but when I've had a coffee, you're like old chainsaw chops, you can't bloody stop me. The brain's going 100 mile an hour, I'm getting more excited, more wound up, and uh, caffeine. Caffeine and whiskey, my two poisons. We're all pretty excited, aren't we, Pace? Yes, we are. Right, we'll see you down the road, Murchison. You can go in the back again. Go on, in the back. Get in there. Get in the back. Stay there this time. Little bastard. Stay there. Well, this is the town of Murchison. Gonna meet Paddy around here somewhere. He set the four square. That's the four square there. Don't see him. Maybe he's the other side. Beautiful day. Absolutely cracker. We're in the hunt zone right now, and uh, got Patrick with me, and his two dogs are in the back. There goes Pace's 
cousin. Is it Tig or Trig? Tig. Tig. And the other pup's Jasper. Normally I only like to help with four dogs maximum, but we've got a couple of pups with us as well. We've got uh, my three and uh, Patrick's one and a pup. So we actually got four going dogs and two pups. So a bit of pup training and it's time to see going on. So we've got dogs winding out the window as we drive along there. Good old sniff. I love these native blocks, eh? they're always awesome to hunt. Once we get a bit higher, we'll let all the dogs out, but right now, just on the way to the zone, we see a uh, dog scenting something. Just increases our chances, might find something on the way, you just never know, the pigs, they can be bloody anywhere. Currently we've got Jasper, that's Patrick's pup, they're straight up there, up there, and Tig over here about 250. I've got all my dogs back in. Patrick's down the gully, just waiting to uh, hear a bark. It's 3.30 in the afternoon, and we're right in the heart of a whole, whole lot of native bush, beach, and a uh, bit of fern on the tops. Don't know if you can see up there or not, probably not. No. Bark. Be calm. Be calm. Well, that was a bit of a fuck up. <laughs> Patrick's pup had a a billy goat, big white billy goat bailed up there and then the other dog went in there too and they both bailing it they weren't holding it and then I, I thought it was a boar I just assumed it was a boar the assumption is the mother of all fuck ups so I sent Pace out and be out and uh, oh things got a bit a bit messy I think uh, although they come off it Pace knows he's not supposed to touch goats but uh, if his masters go running towards something all excited and uh Here's other dogs baiting, what's he gonna do? Anyway, we've got Pace and B back in. Gonna walk up back the truck. Patrick's hunting the, down below me in the gully. There's two. And I'll get back in. It's about four o'clock and we've got probably an hour left of light left before it gets dark. Shitload of goats up here. It's always a problem. Right in the farmer's paddock, causing havoc, and uh, we got no permission to hunt there, so they'll stay in the paddock. Three little bastards. Be nice eating pigs too. They're only small pigs. Just looking at them from the side of the road. So it's been a bit of a funny old day. Uh, got Pace in here and B in the back, and all the other dogs in the very back. And the dogs were chasing a pig. It's Patrick's dog. I had mine in. And they were trail barking on it. Patrick actually saw the pig. Black pig. And uh, you trail barking on a pig, chances are you're never going to catch it. So Patrick's hungry, so I gave him 20 bucks because he's, he's left his wallet behind. And he's getting some bloody... some tucker. Pace just hasn't chilled. And uh, I'm using the same setup um, that I was trying when I was away on the hunting and fishing weekend. Uh, the jacket, it's actually quite good, it's quite um, easy to, to operate and yeah, handy. I think we're going to have one last uh, crack at a forestry block that he's got permission to hunt, so we see how we go, but I won't help me breath. I'd say, um, yeah, we hit and miss now, I reckon. Mind you, you never know, do you? Gotta keep trying. Pig under pulling away with his quads on the back, that's the way to go, and his dogs. Great setup. Well, this is our last chance that uh, something might die to catch something. We've got a road up in front of us here. I'm going to drive up, look at all the dogs out. Going to run them right up this forestry and uh, see what happens. Then we'll get out and get on foot when we get a bit further up. Old Bixie's going 100 mile an hour up the road, trying to keep up with his mates. It's the first time he's ever run in front of the truck. I'm saying to Patrick, I just stood on a big cow shit when I got out of the truck. I hope it's not a cow wandering around up here. Last thing one is bloody six pig dogs dragging a cow out of the ground or a bull. Well, it's about uh, 7.30. Patrick's behind me, leaving Murchison, and no pork. Gave it a good nudge, but nothing. Tomorrow's another day. I'm going on my very first mission on my new giant mountain bike. I mean, it's not a giant mountain bike, the brand is giant. You guys at mountain bike know what I'm talking about. It's uh, carbon fibre, it's a medium size. And it's the trance and i only bought it yesterday so this is my first time going somewhere i've got my little bag there that ricky brown 
gave me. And I've got a rod in there too, just in case I trip up over some fish. Because I'm biking around on the coast. If I see some fish, I'll have a cast. But I'm just going away on a mission to see what I find. So come with me. Just chilling in the sun. Life of a seal, eh? Right here in Ruby Bay. You see my voice, he stuck his head up. He's not concerned. He's probably come on just to have a bit of easy life away from uh, being out at sea. And he might have just come up on the beach just here to warm his, his bones up a bit. A pan over here. Some guys uh, have got their net out. You can see a few seabirds working behind them. They're just setting their net. Or are they bringing it in? I'm not sure. They're not far out. Oh no, it looks like they might be uh, bringing it in actually. Oh no, setting it. And hopefully old mate doesn't get caught in it, eh? Because he's just there. Anyway, we'll carry on our way. On the trance. Down here at Grossy Point, got my bike uh, positioned in the perfect position so it doesn't uh, get sand in the components. It's the only way I can think of doing it. And I'm using uh, a bait catcher reel on that end. This is a surf caster that some good bastard gave me for Christmas. He wanted to remain nameless and I've managed to already hook my bloody lure in my bag down here. Get that out of there. And what I'm using for a lure is a standard uh, it's 30 gram one of these things here, which is still caught up in this. Jeez, you use this bastard clay. Hold on, I'll untangle this. Okay, one of those. So, a slice will do. Anything silver for cowboy. And I'm going to smash it out there. There's no sign of bird life anywhere. So I don't know how it will go, but uh, you don't know if you don't try it here. Okay, good on you, mate. You're giving it a heaps. Good to see. See you later, bud. So Matt paid 800 bucks for that boat. Pretty good deal, eh? That's everything, the trailer, the whole lot. And he's been using it heaps. I call him firewood, Matt, because every time he comes around to my house, he always brings a bit of firewood. He's a good bastard. And he's taken over my launch out there, that one there. It's pretty much his now. Right, I caught no fish, so uh, that's fishing. Yesterday I went hunting and I caught no pork either. Though so the dogs did bail up a gate, which wasn't flash. And that's hunting. Anyway, you keep on trying, eh? Because uh, eventually, sooner or later, it's a numbers thing, you hit something, but I knew I wasn't going to get anything this afternoon. I just wanted to take the bike for a ride, and I'm loving it. What I will start doing is I'll start making some videos using the GoPro, showing where I'm going, and that bit more better than this. This is just a like off the cuff one, right heading home. Mint just grows around here wild. You can probably see my fingers a bit uh, greasy. It's because I've got olive oil and salt on them. I've just been uh, doing the uh, pork. Take a few of those. Gonna stick it in with my pork. I've cut these medallions up and I've salted them. Bruno knows what time it is, don't you, boy? Eh? I'm heating this lid. It's off a camp oven. I've got some olive oil on there. It's gonna heat it up very, very gently, not too hot. And then smash my pork in. One thing about pork is I like to really cook it well. If this is venison, I'll put the whole back strap in. Pork and chicken, you've got to cook properly. Uh, lamb and beef and venison you can get away with, not, but pork's got to be done. So, we just keep on turning these over until they, we think they're well and truly done. We don't want blood dripping out of it, we want them cooked properly. And that way, nobody's going to get crooked eating this tucker. And it's good tucker, good chomping and chewing. A little bit of garlic I've broken up just to cook in the middle there. I can report it's smelling good. So there's not much light left. I've got these two things burning up here. And there's my dinner. And we are munching on veggie. You can't, you can't see it. It's bloody stark. Spencer. He's been with us for quite a wee while now. He's done a few boot camps and he's a good bloke. And we're going to pick up. So, uh, what, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all he does. He can only say yeah. yeah. He doesn't actually have, he can't make whole sentences together yet. He's just at a stage with just like grunts. You say, hey, have you got uh, your belt? He goes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all good to go now. He goes, yeah. Yeah. So, do you have a good day? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we'll catch a pig up here? Yeah. That's all, that's all he can say. There's nothing else. You can't have actual, a meaningful conversation with him yet. He, that part of his brain hasn't yet developed. Is it? Yeah.
<laughs> but it's a really awesome bloke. Yeah, that part of your brain actually has developed because we know it has because when we're doing the boy's hut, he smashed it out. Between you and Ben, oh, the other bloke was pretty good too, eh? Yeah. But you'd already started building it by then, so no, he's actually quite a clever young fella. Yeah. 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 But the most conversation I get out of him is yeah. And that's okay, because when we're in the bush, we don't actually want any conversation. We want to be really shh, quiet. So we are going pig hunting, and uh, hopefully something will die. And on that note, don't watch the video if you don't like hunting. But if you do, then come with me. I'm excited. I've only got Poe in the back. I've got Poe and my pup. I'm leaving the two rat bags behind today. I hunted them on Friday with uh, not much luck. Not much luck at all. But where I'm going, there's a lot of goats. There's actually a few wild sheep uh, sneaking around that have been in the forestry. So I don't want to get into that. Poe's hopefully a bit more uh, grounded. She's got fat Poe's and she's been spayed and had the cancer cut out. She's put on weight, hey? Like she's, she's just gone. Boom. Hey, uh, your pants are falling down, Simon. Hey. Your pants are falling down. Yeah, I've got other pants on. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Oh, you got your new pup in the back, eh? Yeah. So I'm going to take Poe and I'm going to take just my pup. I've left the other two rat bags at home for various reasons. Poe and, po and my pup. Yeah, Big C. No. Yeah, not a lot. Poe's. I'm Poe's. Whether to take Mick or not, just as a backup holder. Well, I mean. Poe po went for a hunt with me on Friday, and she was okay. Uh, might, might take Mac and put him on leash. Yeah, I'm taking my rifle too in case we get a bail up. So, um, I left I left uh, my holders at home because I wanted it. Morning, sir. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. You right? You're warm enough because it's going to drop down the temp, eh? Hey? Yeah, got plenty of clothes. Yeah. I've got another one. Oh, bloody good. Oh, we'll turn it. This is Jody's. Nutrition, oh, double chocolate muffins. Is that your breakfast? No, no, I had wheat bakes, I think. Yeah. And some of this. Cool. Oh, you got one of those, nice. Yep. Bloody good jackets. When'd you get that, mate? Lockdown. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got a big ordering. Did uh, did Joel do you a good deal? Yep. Good on you, Joel. <laughs> He's wearing the Game Gear uh, jacket. It's actually not the, the Tusker, what's that one no, called? It's Blast. Blast that, is it? Blast. Blast Tusker? We don't know, something. we're just making it up. Last something. How is it? Good. It's awesome. A bit of hunting it, yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm wearing the opposition. Sorry, Joel. I'm trying it for the second time. Oh, I'm not totally convinced yet. Haven't had a chance to really smash it into some like hard yeah. country. But oh, I do love this. This is the new feature for the, the GPS. I look at that, eh? It's, it's really good, eh? And it works good. I use it on Friday, and it's a great thing. So um, I'm sold on that. But we'll see how the rest goes. Nothing's fallen a bit yet, but we haven't given a good run. They are good jackets, the Game Gear jackets. But Game Gear is good gear, there's no doubt about it. We've, we pretty much put the Tusker jacket on the on the map with um, the boys a couple of years ago. We used to, all the young guys used to have them. Yeah. And uh, Joel does a bloody good, he makes really good videos too. His videos are coming next level, eh? He's pretty good, eh? He's very good, not pretty good, he's very good. Yeah, he's, I'm really impressed with his work. It's a lot better than mine, that's for sure. So that's uh, Simon's new pup. And then there we've got uh, Dot and Pink. Currently Simon's running on Dot, those uh, special pills for dogs. So not pills, actually a nutrient. What are they called, bro? Um, canine Octane Plus. Yeah, yeah, I've used myself. to be healthy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how far she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Might go all the way to Tark again. Cool. Oh, did, you, did you hear the name of the new dog? No, what's the name of the new dog? Chop. What is it? Chop. Chop. Hey, Chop. Chop's chop feet there. Ooh. Must be dog. This is our backup plan if the dogs don't go very well. This is Gorse, Simon's cat. This cat has survived around here. God knows how with pig dogs everywhere. Just does it. Who knows how? Jeez, it wouldn't last five minutes at my place. I probably would actually because it knows how to handle dogs, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a neat cat actually. I came over to Simon's the other night uh, to catch up with our mate Wendy who was hunting with Simon and this cat just came and sat on my knee like it was a mate. Just parked itself there, parked itself half the night. I think she thinks she's a dog. Yeah, she's grown up with dogs. <laughs> she's getting a crack at you. <laughs> All right. Just entered the hunt zone now and I've given young Spencer a radio, just a wee two-way radio, one of these. They're actually... Uh, Gifted to us by Richard Weir, 
very good pig hunter, mate of mine down south. Uh, I do have a personal locator beacon, but I'll be keeping an eye on. I've got the GPS. I had a second GPS for the boys tracking unit, and it has disappeared out of my truck. And I'm not saying someone's nicked it, but it happened in the last week when I was in town shopping and that and I've got a bad habit of leaving my truck unlocked at times and I'm too trusting and it, I think someone's looked inside the truck and lifted it. And if you are that person that's taken it then uh, good luck with it. But, uh, we really need it because normally I get the boys their own GPS so they know where they're going if they get separated from me. So right now we don't have that one. I do have one that was also uh, gifted to me by a good bastard Justin but it's an Australian frequency and it doesn't work here so if anybody knows how to change that frequency let us know. It's an Alpha 100, but it just doesn't work here on our frequency in New Zealand. So I'd be keen to know if you do know anything about how to change those, or if anybody can swap one. It's brand new, in the packet, never been used. We're about two, or two minutes before we're going to get out and let dogs out. And I'm just uh, sitting here scouting around here as we drive up the forestry track, looking for signs on either side of the road of pigs that might have crossed. And that's something you keep your eyes out too, mate. Because if you see a fresh crossing, it's a good place to park out and let dogs out. Hunting's actually been really crap lately, so I'm really hoping we can get something on this hunt. Just has not been flash at all. Simon's let his dogs out, and I'm gonna probably let mine out too right now. She's noisy. Old tail wagon. Look how fat Poe's got since she got spayed. She just put the weight on, eh? She's been spayed, mate. We've got a bit of light rain coming right now. Come on, Bigsy, you can come out, mate. Not sure. Calm down. It's okay, mate. Calm down. It's Bigsy. It's Bigsy. Mm, yes. Good dog. Good dog. Calm down. Yeah, last time Mick beat him up. That'll do, that'll do. That's fair biting. That'll do, Big Z. Big Z, come. Come here. Stay here. It's okay. Calm down. That's fair, fair biting, eh? Stay here. Might get a bail up, eh? It'll be good to get a bail up with these guys since we haven't got the rat pack. Tackles up a little bit. Introductions. Oh, Big Z's a bit of a, uh, bit of a baby. It's going to be a bailing dog, Bigsy. I think it's going to be a holding dog. This is Dot. This is the main dog for John and Simon. Excited, mate. Yeah. 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 I've given him my knife. So hopefully he gets here in time. If you pitch around here. Dogs all fired up at dinner where it is. We've been hunting about an hour, no joy. I've only seen deer sign, no pig sign at all.
bit of a stock trail up here in Po, which just seems to be on it right now. This is where Poe's just gone on there, and you can see she's doing a wee circle. The other dogs are all hanging in close, but uh, it's enough to make a go. Oh no, she's backtracking, she's coming back. Yeah, bugger. Ah, oh, well, having a look, nothing else. She'll be coming back out any minute. Pretty sure having to poke through all this undergrowth. Here she comes now. Good girl, Poe. She smelt something's been through, but she couldn't pick it up. Still good hunting on her part. and power just down in here is dot Simon I just spotted a pig about a 70 pound pig sow coming down the ridge so there are a couple of pigs around where we're hunting but there's zero wind there's nothing our dogs might get it from here Simon or maybe we should go down further to the ridge but that pig's going to be going down this gully eh yeah. Poe's just come off the track now and Dot, we've just seen Dot go down this little bit of gully there down here like, okay and the pig was there so we got all our dogs back in except Dot and she's still dragging a pig the same one I saw with Simon going up above us here, right up in there got the big circle, she's staying on it moving quite fast been on it for a while now, probably about 30 minutes, still staying on it current status is that uh, Dot's still bailing on that pig she has been for probably a good 30 minutes now and it's quite far up in front of us and we've still got to climb to get to her John's poking the truck through some pretty thick scrub right now and we're hopefully going to get there in time ooh, felt that yeah, that's a flash hopefully get there in time to um, let our dogs out to assist Dot because she's been on that page, she's been tracking it for over an hour and bailing it for 30 minutes so she'll be tired and hopefully she hasn't been injured. Okay, status is that Dot is still bailing that pig and holding it and I've released my dogs and Simon's released his. I'm literally running uphill right now trying to get to it. Jody's in front of me, so is Simon and Young Spence is also in front of me and it's hard yakka this is where fitness really comes into hunting hopefully our dogs get there before it breaks Dot's done an amazing job I'm finding it just how unfit I am so both Spencer's radio mine have gone flat batteries, only brand new batteries today, it's fucking useless. And uh, I want to talk to Simon. The last message I got was that she was bailing and my dog's on the way. But I've got comms here on this and it looks like they've gone up and they've come back again. So, I don't know, we're going to keep on pushing up through this stuff here. We're on a spur and we want to stay on it, we don't want to get out in the thick stuff. We can help it. It's a lot of gorse and five finger and shit. Pigs have been living in here, and goats, and deer. Bit of a track. Okay, status update is that Simon's closing the gap on Dot. She's still treed. Got my dogs. No noise of Dot. She's either holding or she's lost it, we don't know. Jody's up in front of us. Just punching our way up through the spur. Native. Oh, now I'm fucked. Oh. Speeds are still going good. It's pretty fucking steep. He's going. Oh. This is what I love about pig hunting. It forces you to be fit. You've got to get to your dogs in time. Oh. Keeps an old man on. 
on his toes. So the status is all good news, although this fella couldn't get there quite in time, but that's okay. It was a long way off in a shitty gully, and it was the same sow that I saw originally. So Doc's been tracking it for ages. How big do you reckon that pig is, Simon? Going to run out of radio. And the same pig, um, was she dry or was she feeding? I reckon she was feeding, but... Repeat. Feeding. I thought she was. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, she won't be flashed. She'll be pretty hard chewing after running that long, but at least we've got a pig in the bag. We've broken our, broken our bad spell. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, good work, mate. Good work. Okay, yeah, we'll see you down the bottom. So what we're going to do now is we've gone up the spur here, and it's actually easier for us to go right back down the spur. Go right down the spur and and take the truck right around the bottom. They'll be pushing out through some thick country. Off. Cool. Picking up someone else. That's not that's not our crew. Yeah. Anyway, um. Someone talking to John. It's not our crew. <laughs> right, we'll pack up and head on down. This is the classic way you get lost in the scrub, what you just did then. Hey. Yeah. So he raced ahead of me. He raced ahead, and you thought you knew where we were going. But when, when you're going down a spur, it's so easy to peel off a side like you just did. And that's how you get yourself bushed. And you keep on going because you thought you were on the same spur, didn't you? Yeah. And it's common. And I've done it myself. We've all done it if you're in the bush. So when you're going down a spur, the trick is, when you're going up the spur, like if you hear, see that big tree up there? There was a mark there, that was a landmark. You've just got to observe where you are going and when you go into a place like this, because you can so easily get lost. And the other thing is too, don't push on in front of me, um, unless you know, we're in a place that's obvious where you are, because you can get lost easy. There's a pig mark right down there, look. Nice pig mark, the easy 100 pound pig. Anyway, we've got a pig in the bag, and we're heading back down the spur, this spur. And uh, that's a good lesson for you to in the future, just make it real you know, observation where you're going and when you go in, so you don't do that and go, oh, shit, there's some pig rooting up in here. So that was the same pig that I saw originally, and fair play to Dot, she tracked it for like two hours, finally uh, bailed it, and scrapped it, and bailed it, and then we let uh, the other dogs out and they grabbed it. So, broken the spell because, you know, it's been bloody, hunting's been rats and mice really, the odd small pig here and there. Uh, it looked like a pig that was feeding from a distance where I saw it, and I, Simon confirmed that it is. So that's the thing about when you're hunting wild game is everything's either pregnant or it's just had offspring. It's constant going. Pigs have two litters a year. Depending on the amount of tucker will determine how many piglets they throw. It's not very often you get a maiden sow that's... It's nice when you do, because they're the ultimate eating pig. Shiny coat, fat bum. That's what I like to catch, but most of the time they're in pig or they're got piglets they're feeding so hard to get the really the best meat as much fun as it is hunting with dogs the meat that you shoot that never saw the bullet coming is always tastier because it's not running around re releasing all the amino acids and lactic acid in its system but I'm strictly dog and knife man have been my whole life and probably not likely to change oh you never know you never say never but I love hunting with my dogs That noise you can hear is wacker. And this gully that I'm filming in right now is where our dogs are. The boys are carrying that pig out, but there's some more sign up there, so they might uh, get into another pig. The expense is having a good day. It's a pretty awesome country. Pig country. Time we're coming out, the dogs. Young Jody behind carrying the pig. So Simon looking at his tracker. Might have a dog out still. He's filming Jody with the pig, here he goes.
It's going well, Jardy. Good hunter. Not afraid doing the hard yards. Good result. Steep country. Nice going, fella. Hey. Good there. Good one. Yeah, it's the pig, all right. Not Certainly not as big as we thought it was. No. Yeah. But I'm, I reckon it was the same pig. Yep. Yeah. Still good to get the pig. Pigs are come. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Pigs are come. Come on, Pixie come, come on boy, good boy. Good boy, hey, good boy, Pixie come. Pixie come, come on. Come on, Pixie, come on. Pixie come, come on. Come on. Good boy, good boy, come on. He's not sure, he's never crossed the river before. Pixie come. Pixie come. Pixie come. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Jeez, that was a lot of work, Si. It's actually a really good job of the guys to retrieve that. It was a hard pick to get and uh, won't show you all the footage because it's a bit graphic but pig hunting being what it is, some of it's going to be brutal but a really good result to actually get the pig. It was in a hard place to, to go. And it was Simon and Jody that did the hard yards going down there. We just came yeah. down below to pick him up. Yeah. Bigsy's still standing in the middle of the river. Jody's got his feet wet already, so he's gone back to get Bigsy. He's a good bastard. You have to hold his collar. Don't let his collar go, mate. Just put him across. Don't let it go. Just hold tight. Hold tight. There you go. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, oh. Jeez. Just go steady, bud. Good effort, man. Good effort. It's not light. Good effort. He pissed on you. Oh shit. Big to come. Come on. Good effort. Spot on, man. Good on you. Did he pee on you? All up my arm. Oh well, hey, look, tell you what, being pissed on, it's better than being pissed off. Yup. Good on you, buddy. Thank you. Good man. So that's our hunt done and dusted. What's the highlight for you today, mate? Uh, getting a pig. Getting a pig. It's not just getting a pig, it's all you're really building up to getting a pig though too, you know, like we did that big walk up the spur. Yeah. You were running, you took off like, I thought, whoa, you're going to get there and then suddenly you slow down a bit. And then you got a bit lost coming back down, didn't you? Yeah. Right? So you learned something today? What did you learn? Uh, find off a landmark or something? Yep. Observe as you're going in. Yeah, yeah find landmarks and things. Because coming down ridges you can get lost. But yeah, it's all good getting out now. And on that note, uh, if you know someone that's young and doesn't have a dad to take him hunting, take him hunting if you're a hunter, or if you're into fishing and you know some young fella that's got no one taking fishing, take him fishing, because they enjoy it and you'll enjoy it too. I'm pretty stoked actually, I'm sort of buzzing a bit because I've had like really shitty hunting and fishing and even though it was just a sow we caught, not a big one, it's just great to go home with something on the track. Yeah, that's what it's all about, get some meat. So be good, can't be good, be careful, and we'll see you in the next video. And if you're still watching at this stage, then uh, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already so we can keep on showing you a little bit of our world. And you can comment below and maybe share us a little bit of your world. We'll clear this side, bud? Yep. Okay, good. See ya.